Okay, so I've gotten a bunch of questions over the past day about how I built the dashboard for the Amazon Connect and Lex integration. And I wanted to just do a quick walkthrough of the whole service and also show the dashboard so that people could have some idea of how it all works and how it all comes together. Cool, so first we'll jump into Amazon Connect. And I'll use this blog post instance that I have. And one thing to know is that as you go into the blog, into the instance, you need to make sure that it has the permissions to invoke your Lexbot and that it knows your Lexbot exists. So you have to add it here before you go into the actual Connect app. So I'll go into the Connect app, I'll log in as administrator. This will take a moment to load. And then I'll go into this kind of contact flows section. And I've got a blog flow that I created. And this is not my real phone number, by the way. So what will happen is uh, there'll be an entry point when a customer calls in, it'll go into this Lexbot. Uh, they'll get this prompt in the Lexbot. And I, I got to this section just by clicking on the uh, Get Customer Input widget. Uh, they'll get this prompt, hi, thanks for voting. You can vote for your favorite text editor by saying I vote for Vim or something similar. If you have any issues, say connect me with an agent. I could also record my own prompt and have my own voice play instead of playing the prompt from here. Uh, and then I have the choice of doing touch tone based input and allowing customers to design their workflows that way. Or I can invoke an Amazon Lexbot. And this Amazon Lexbot, uh, in this case it's Vote Editor, is the name of the bot. And I want to invoke the latest version, the prod version. And I'll send along an attribute, which is the phone number. I don't actually use that right now, but a better implementation of what I've built could use that. And then I'll also send along various intents like vote editor and connect it to agent. And then what you see is this vote editor will go into the hangup section when it's completed and connect to agent will go into this transfer to phone number section when it's completed. Uh, and then the default section uh, goes to hang up and the error section goes to hang up. So that's the connect side of things. And you again, you can get to that customer input section just by going right here and dragging one of these on. So that's connect. Let's take a look at the Lexbot and understand how that works. So the Lexbot is this vote editor bot. And I only have two intents. I have connect to agent. I want to talk to agent, agent representative, Randall. Let me talk to Randall, human. Uh, and it doesn't take any slots or anything, and it just fires this blog voter lambda. Then I have another one which has a slot type of editor, which has a list of editors, uh, and it will take things that are outside of this list as well. Uh, and it'll say, I want to vote for editor, I vote for editor, editor is the best, or editor, which also invokes this same lambda function with a goodbye message of thanks for your vote, bye. Uh, and I also enabled Twilio integration after somebody on Twitter requested it, and that was really easy. I just went and signed up for Twilio and put in this information and then all of a sudden it was working and I didn't have to change any code or anything. So let's look at the Lambda function that we invoke from Lex. Uh, I have this build response helper method. All this really does is it allows me to just type in build response with the message that I want instead of having to build out a correct response to the Lex invocation every single time. I also uh, go ahead and create my or import my DynamoDB table and make it available for me to edit. And then if I call the connect to agent intent, then I ret return this build response of okay, I'm connecting you to an agent, which will play through the default voice in connect. Otherwise, this vote editor one is invoked, which will take the editor that's in the editor slot, store that in the variable editor. And then it'll call DynamoDB update item with the key of editor to lowercase and the update expression set votes equal to uh, increment, which is in this case one, plus either the number of existing votes or if that editor doesn't exist in the table yet, then zero so that it'll have one vote. Uh, and then I return all the new values. So I say that awesome, now uh, editor has blank votes and I just return that response uh, and then I just have this kind of catch-all in case we uh, misidentify an intent but this portion of the code really should never be reached given the way we're invoking it with uh, with Lex it's it's really just there for testing locally and stuff like that 
Okay, so that should hopefully make the section of the code that is running kind of within the AWS realm makes sense. I'll show you the DynamoDB table really quickly. So here you see all the votes. We've got some auto scaling and stuff happening. Uh, but let's look at the dashboard because that's the portion of the code that people were having trouble understanding and that they were curious about. So uh, the easiest way to investigate this is actually just to open up the source on the page itself. And I don't know what this thing is. Uh, open up the source of the page itself and start going through the JavaScript. So the first thing I do is I use a Cognito pool and I'll show you what a Cognito pool is now. So if we go into the Cognito service and I go to manage federated identities, I created this voting app, uh, federated identities pool. And this identities pool allows me to assume a role for unauthenticated users, which is in this case, the Cognito voting app pool. And if we go into IAM, you can see that I have this policy that says, okay, you're allowed to scan DynamoDB uh, table editor votes. Um, nothing else, really. I mean, you're allowed to call Cognito Sync and, and put events in mobile analytics, but that's it. Now, uh, so that gives us the permissions to invoke the commands we want to invoke uh, within the client machine. So then we create our DynamoDB client we declare some chart variables. It's a donut chart. This is the color palette. Uh, we return a certain number of votes. We return a label. But the real magic happens right here in this get data function. And the get data function, all it does is say, hey, I want you to run a scan on this editor votes table and then uh, sort those items. And then the number of votes is equivalent to the uh, the name of the item and the integer number of votes. And then we say if this variable columns that we've created initially is uh, already existing, then we go ahead and make sure that we're not calling a or causing a browser update unless the uh, unless the number of any of the votes have changed so you'll notice you don't see any flickering here in the JavaScript here in the uh, canvas every five seconds and that's just because we're only calling an update if we have a new number of votes so then if we do have to update then we just call chart load update new columns and then we have a document event listener for DOM content loaded that calls get data and says set interval get data 5000. Now there are better ways of building all of this. One of the things that you should do is probably have people come in through a Cognito authenticated role. Uh, so they would sign up to vote and they could call in and vote with uh, whatever they signed up as uh, or they could text to vote with whatever they signed up as and then their vote would be recorded and associated with their username and you could have a Lambda function that's listening as a DynamoDB stream listener, and it would add and subtract votes from the columns based on where that person changed their votes. Uh, that would give you some additional analytics, and it would allow you to track your users and all that other stuff. And it would also be better to put all these calls to uh, DynamoDB, not necessarily in the browser, but within yet another Lambda function, and just cache that API gateway call for 10 seconds or so. That way you would be making only one call to DynamoDB instead of in number of calls to DynamoDB that you're currently making. So right now, if I have a bunch of people watching the website, I'm making a bunch of different calls to DynamoDB. If I were to front that with an API gateway endpoint, it would be much easier to uh, scale just because the API gateway would be responsible for scaling instead of the more expensive uh, calls out to DynamoDB table scans. But given the low cardinality of potential items, 
it all kind of returns in one one scan, one network round trip. So I don't consume, uh, even if I have thousands of people on the page, I don't consume too many read capacity units, and I'm not worried about it. But just if you were to build this for a real production use case, you might do it the way that I had mentioned before instead. All right, I hope that makes sense, and I hope you guys uh, understand a little bit better how all of this works now.